Hello and welcome to the beautiful map Vault in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 to the 2v2 multiplayer match. Everybody is picking random and we get to play the Gondor faction and our ally is Rohan. That's pretty nice. Vault is a pretty big map. That's why we need to recruit many of these Gondonites to be able to fight for the map control. Map control is the key to victory. So we need to recruit Peregrine Took at the beginning of the game and build one blacksmith. The reason is simple, because we need to get the blacksmith to level 2 as soon as possible, which is going to give us the chance and the opportunity to buy upgrades like Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and Banner. The later you build the blacksmith, the more delayed your upgrades are going to become. And the reason why we are not building a blacksmith in a farm is because we have so many settlements around the fortress, around the castle, that we will not need the money from the farm. And if you buy additional farm inside your castle, you will have to eventually wait to be able to purchase the outside settlements. And outside settlements are always greater because the farms outside are always starting with level 2, which means they will give you more money than the farms inside your castle. So at the beginning of the game, we will be splitting our soldiers and one of them is going to be sent forward to actually deal some damage to the evil faction player. Either Isengard or Mordor. Because evil factions are gonna grow rich on a map like Vault, you know, in pretty much no time. And we don't want that to happen. If evil factions get too much money, and by the way, if you don't know, the Lammer Mills are able to give you more money at the same time in compare to slaughterhouses, furnaces, blacksmiths, or farms. And he's attacking us. That's not bad because we have to hobbit just on the spot. I believe if the hobbit we should be able to defend, and he knows that. Hopefully he's not getting to the other side and capturing our settlement. That would be actually pretty bad. Please, move soldiers, move! This mill is unprotected. Oh, he's turning back. Okay. I mean, we can kill him now. Kite. Hit and run. Hit and run. <laughs> it's so funny when Pippin is screaming like that, you know what I'm saying? But this way you can kind of cancel the auto attack animation and make him shoot a little bit faster. So let's buy this farm and we will be building one more farm inside the castle after purchasing this farm on the spot. And we will not keep wasting time. We will go forward the second we are able to buy the farm. And with the Hobbit, we are doing a good job defending this. We will also need to send the soldiers just in time. Build one more farm inside the castle. And the next building we are waiting for and we are collecting resources for is the stable. Once again, you see how big this map is, and on this map we will need at least three Gondonites, if not more than that, to be able to not only defend our own settlements, but also uh, crush the settlements from our opponents. That is the plan. Oh, this farm is going to be unfortunately <laughs> taken down, but it's, it's not the end of the world. We killed two soldiers for that. I take it. And our ally is putting pressure on the minimap, and for that reason, the other settlement from Isengard player is also not defended. So by the way, the matchup is Gondor, Rohan against Gondor and Isengard. Pretty solid matchup. It's equally balanced for every single team. So now with the Hobbit Peregrine took, we might be able to creep the Goblin Lair if there is nothing else happening. And now the stable is coming up. That's great. We have so many resources, I mean, so many farms outside now, that's great. We will have actually lots of money. Just change the formation when you want to fight to get additional armor with your Gondor soldiers. And level 2, by the way, oh my goodness, that's going to be painful. Now, good luck dealing with that. Level advantage in Battle for Middle Earth 1, especially early on, is such a massive advantage. It's really hard to counterplay that. That's why you need to make sure to demolish your structures in time to deny your opponent the experience points he's looking for. And we are creeping at the same time. The stable is up on the field, 560, because of the discount we get from the farms. Remember, farms are giving you the food bonus. The more farms you have, the cheaper your Gondonites are gonna get. And we will be getting more, more and more Gondonites. So they usually cost 800. If you don't have any farms, if you have no discount, you will have to invest 800. And now we are saving more than 200 resources just we have just because we have such a great map control. Which is going to be even greater very, very soon. So in total, we have like, what? Six farms outside? That's crazy, dude. This is crazy. 
get this farm and hobbit is almost done creeping that's dope we will now get the second gondonite right after the first one build a well for the sustain and then we will be filling up the base with blacksmiths just to get the bonuses from oh wait a second let me actually make, make the camera a bit um you know faster with the blacksmiths we will get the bonuses from the steel bonus which means cheaper upgrades let's creep this at the bottom right side oh he was creeping this hey <laughs> thanks for the leash brother thanks for the leash i will take the creep and i will take the money too um, we are gonna grow so rich guys holy moly creeping two at the same time getting the last hit just go back now to the well for the sustain fill up the base with blacksmiths only once again the steel bonus i mean you need to make sure and understand the reason why you're building certain things you know what i'm saying and blacksmiths are essential buildings for the gondor faction because if you have no blacksmiths your upgrades are going to be quite expensive and remember you will need to upgrade multiple units throughout the entire game together let's keep this right off the bat i mean more power points never can hurt we can also go for the alvin wood as we have the power points collected I believe we have more power points collected than the open and gone. Oh, he has Gondonites there. Okay, we need to fight. It's a 2v1 Oh, he has Warchan. Okay, we need to pick up the Elven Wood and use it. Because Elven Wood, besides giving us 35% increased armor, also nullifies enemy leadership bonuses. So now the Warchan is being completely negated. And Gondor has to watch out. He's paying attention and he will be retreating with his Gondonites, which is the right call. Okay, upgrades time, boys. We will get Blades first. And before, I'm gonna use the heal. Before the heavy armor, I'm gonna actually get the third Gondor Knight on the field to get the stable to level 2, to get the chance to purchase the, you know, the Knight Shields for additional resistance against arrows. And with them, we can also try to go for a rush into the Isengard Castle. Creeping, the, uh, destroying this farm at the bottom right side, that's good. Keep up the pressure all the time, let's go for the Gondor Knight number 3 to get the stable to level 2. Hobbit, Meriodoc, Brandywalk, he has no chance. Run, you fool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's demolishing the farm. He knows the farm is going to be taken down. So, it's smart move. Demolishing the structures in time. Once again, it's going to kind of deny the opening player to get the experience points and power points he's looking for. Remember, the longer the game goes on, the more impactful the power points are going to become. Obviously, the first player who will get the ultimate power point unlocked either Balrog from the evil factions or the army of the dead from the good factions is going to have a, a huge advantage. Let's get now for the shields, uh, night shields. So basically, with night shields and then the forge blades, we can look to go for a rush. So Isengard was starting with the pikemen, not pikemen, sorry, with the Vork riders, which are not bad for the map control fights, but they are not going to be enough to defend against the Gondonites. You know, in this matchup, when you play Isengard against two good factions like Gondor and Rohan, you want to start with Uruk Pit and get the Uruk Pit to level two as soon as possible to be able to recruit some Isengard pikemen. We are winning this fight, but he's paying attention. It's fine. Now, we can go for an attack very, very soon. Heal is on cooldown, but it's fine. ID shields first. Once again, that's a huge armor boost against arrows. The farm is going to be taken down. It's fine. We want to bring the fight to them, you know? We want to keep pressure on them. That means they won't be able to get to our side of the map. If this makes sense for you guys. Now, we need to micro. I mean, he has not really a lot to defend himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, what can he do? He has not even upgrades on the Warcry Riders. He cannot match against our Gondonites. Let's fight this. He's also not demolishing the structures, which is a major mistake. We can also try to take down um, the Armory. That would be huge. That's gonna buy us so much time and kinda uh, put the Isengard player quite behind. Okay, just get out. He was using Warchant. You can see them glowing. When you see them glowing, you know they are buffed, you know? And Warchan is stronger than Forge Blades. Remember, the Horse Shields, or the Night Shields in this case, is not making us strong against War Riders. Now we are buying the Heavy Armor. Once the Heavy Armor is finished, we can turn in fight. If almost heal back up from the Spellbook, that's good. Now we can turn, and he doesn't want to take the fight, which is fine. Now we can set them back to the well and sustain up over time. So map control wise, it's looking it's looking good for us. Our ally is not doing that great on his own side, as far as I can see from the universe, but it's fine. We will now be ready very soon for a for a bigger rush with three gondonites, with shields, heavy armor, and forge blades. It's gonna be big. Our ally has Tyrion, the king of Rohan. 
who was eaten alive by the fell beast from the Lord of Nice Ghouls, the Witch King. Press on. Swords. Men of Nice Wedge. Riders. We have the new so the, the plan is simple. You want to always make sure to keep your Gondor Knights protected. That's very important, not only for Gondor Knights, but for any unit beside Ors eventually, because they are for free. Uh, because losing units is, you know, quite painful in Battle for Middle Earth games. They cost you a lot of money, but also a lot of time to level them up. Once again, level advantage is massive. One Gondor Knight level 10 can beat like three Gondor Knights level 2 in a 1v3 situation. I hope it. Very green too is getting Man, invisible. Oh my goodness, that's nice. Let's go. So now let's go to the top side and group up with our ally and go for a bigger push. I believe Isengard will struggle to defend such a force. And we have not lost a single Gondor Knight just yet. We are doing a great job map control wise. My horse is crazy worse. I used to play Gondor and Rohan a lot back in the day when the game was obviously much more active. And microing with those mobile units around the map all the time and trying to keep them alive throughout the entire game. I personally enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so now we have two Rohirrim and three Gondor Knights. With Theorin leadership bonuses, we can now go for a, for a big attack. Oh, he has used War Chant. Oh, he has Glorious Charge too. Alright, Death and Glory, let's go. Right now, right. In the meantime, we need to make sure to get some map control. Please get the farm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice. Now let's move to the spot. But also we need to make sure that we are not losing any of these Gondor Knights. I mean, the War Riders are fighting us, but they have no chance. They cannot fight us, you know? The Glorious Charge is the best path. Does he heal? Yeah, he has heal. You know? I was, you know, ready for the, for the worst case scenario. To heal up the allies' theory. So we might actually use heal now. And keep rushing. Yeah, let's use heal and keep rushing, I guess. Boom. And uh, the heal. Oh, there is money on... I cannot raise this guy. There is money on the ground. I will take it. We have so much money now. Let's buy the outposts and build even more farms, shall we? And then we can even save up for the market, please. Dude, we will grow... Guys, we will grow rich this game. I will show you the power of Gondor's economy. If you have great amounts of map control with this many farms outside, your market please is going to boost the hell out of the resource income and you will be the Bill Gates of Middle-earth. Or Elon Musk, you know? Keep up the pressure. I mean, look how many power points we are collecting too. And we are destroying those furnaces over and over again. And they will be level 1 for a really long time. And it, that's big. Because level 1 gives you less money than level 2. Level 2 gives you less money than level 3. And obviously, they are also squishier. So killing the enemy furnaces or slaughterhouses or any other building when they are, you know, level 2 or level 1 will mean that his eco is going to be messed up for a really long time in the, in the game. And demolishing towers is the key to victory, by the way. You want to make sure to demolish the sentry towers because they are giving so much experience points and also power points to the open end. And Isengard is not doing a... Great job. Yes, Lord's back on the menu, boys. Oh, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> he's rage quitting the game. You know, he's aborting the game. All right. Now it's turning into a 2v1 situation, boys. But Isengard now got the entire castle and all the money Gondor player was collecting. So maybe he might make something happen. But, you know, obviously it's going to be tough. Obviously. So let's get the farm. Look at the mini-map in, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen. We have such a great amount of map control. That's amazing. In marketplace with, mark, uh, you know, with Grand Harvest, with the Iron Ore and the Siege Materials, it's going to boost us even further. I mean, obviously, we could save for Gandalf, but I want to just make sure that we have enough money for anything we really want. And because we were able to keep the horses protected throughout the entire game, we were never forced to revive them or invest additional money let's go boys let's go glorious charge that's gonna be a big one ladies and gentlemen boom sun for death and glory oh look at this rohirrim boys they are shining bright like a diamond and always macro guys you know map, micro is important but macro is even more important doing multitasking and oh my he stole two of my gondonites what a thief you thief 
Riders. Oh my goodness, the Orphan is so tanky. <laughs> I mean, the horses are not dealing too much damage to the Citadels, so that's their weakness, which kind of makes sense because they are so busted. They are so strong and reliable in many, many cases, and I, it's okay that they don't deal that much damage to the Citadel, you know? That's fine. Okay, our horses are back. Obviously, the Warm Tongue doesn't last forever, and we are dealing so much damage to him. Holy moly. And because of the outpost from the ally, who has a well at the outpost, you can always go back, heal up, and do that over and over again. And without Pikeman, he has no chance of defending himself. We have so much money, dude. I mean, our money doesn't look that great right now, but trust me on that one, in, in about a minute or a two, or two minutes, you will see that you will feel the difference, and you will see that visually the difference, the money is going to raise, rise to the sky. Archer range maybe for the archers inside the thing, even though we don't need that. I mean, I wanna, you know, I wanna get Gandalf on the field. That's why we are building actually three um, seat uh, statues at the bottom outpost because statues are giving you the hero bonus, which are gonna make your heroes cost less. So Gandalf, for example, who normally costs six thousand, will only cost you four thousand two hundred. We rule this day. Let's kill this. Okay. We are getting so many power points. We can even go for the Eagle Spirit with this one. We can skip Gandalf. Divide. We can keep him gray for a bit. Remember, Gandalf, Gandalf the Grey is able to get mounted in the patch 2.2. However, you are not able to use uh, your Easter Light when you're only Gandalf the Grey. And also, your powers are dealing way less damage and recharging way slower. You cannot win this fight. There is no way. We have enough power points now for... Let's go Gandalf. We have enough power points now for the Eagles if we need to. We can go for the Eagles and then use the Eagles to get the power points we need for Gandalf anyway. So we should be fine. Hope it is doing... <laughs> Penny Green took is, you know, doing, doing his own thing there. This base is gonna fall, boys. This base is gonna fall. Like, he has nothing he's giving up on the space, but remember, he has another castle. The castle from his ally, as he left the game, he was leaving the castle to his ally. Gandalf is going to join the battlefield very, very soon. But let's kill the Zita, and we will be buying this castle right after. The money we are missing will be collected in no time. Let's not lose this area because Gandalf is going to come out from this outpost, obviously. And Gandalf, ladies and gentlemen, is joining the battlefield. Uh, he's moving on. He saw the eagles. We can keep chasing them eventually. And look at the money. We have right now 3,500 plus, right? We will get to the 5,000 in no time. It's going to be fiesta. All right. <laughs> look, if you see the money, I, I, you know, I would love to know how much money and resource the income we would have in like a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like this detail is missing. I would love to see that. Like in Age of Empires, for example, if you play, it will tell you how much gold you, you get per minute. How much, you know, food you get per minute. And I would love to know this also in Battle for Middle Earth games. Just to know and see with my eyes, okay, this is the amount of resources I am able to collect in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Let's close the gate and hope for the best. Because he might go for a sneaky gate rush. You know, I don't want to risk the biscuit. Now we will be filling up the base, the, the castle here, with many, many farms. Farms are better at this stage because we have already the full steel bonus from the from the you know from the blacksmiths. And farms are getting higher value from the grand harvest than blacksmiths do from the iron ore. So iron ore is gonna boost your income by 30. Uh, 30? <laughs> 30. And your Grand Harvest is going to boost them by 40. So 10% more value. And when you have this many additional farms outside and inside your castle, it's going to be big. Now we will also need to build uh, the Siege Warwicks. Because we need to siege the Gondor castle to get inside the jeans. The outpost here has been taken down. And even though it's a 2v1 situation, guys, you want to always keep focusing on the map control. Always. The Siege Warwicks. Yes, also my ally has Aragorn to protect the siege weapons. Let's get more map control. He was actually fighting for the map control, but we will have to, you know, obviously retake it. Very important. Okay, so it's a matter of time. The siege is going to begin. Let's use Lightning Sword. Can we kill them? Can we catch them? Please? 
No. They got away. They got away. They got away. And also, in the patch 2.2, we actually added a new animation for the for the Grand Harvest and for the Iron Ore. That means your opening and also you yourself will be able to see that visually now. Earlier, you was never being able to know that or to see that with your eyes. Unless you actually zoom in and kind of see the amount of money this farm is generating for you. Let's use heal to fight them. They are level 6, those Gunner Knights. That's why they are so strong. What is this Warp Rider doing? Let's use a Plus them. He needs to be careful now. Oh, be careful. One cancel. Let's go for a Lightning... Uh, not Lightning Swarm. The Easter Light. The Warp Riders are quite fast. Let's buy this one, and my ally was destroying this one. We want to make sure that he has no money, no resource income from anywhere outside of his castle. That's the goal. He's not paying attention. I mean, obviously, it's a 2v1 situation. My ally was using the Elvin summon. There is no Orcorn. Looks like the Gunner Knights are going to still be able to get away. They are so tanky. I mean, once again, you see level 6 with upgrades like Night Shields, Heavy Armor, and Forge Blades. They are extremely powerful. Let's go. But, guys, I won't let this Gunner Knights enter their castle. Trust me. I will chase them down and catch them with Gandalf. Let's build towers just in case they might cross this way. And Gandalf is going to be on the spot. Move Gandalf. Move Shadow Fags. Fly Shadow Fags. Oh, can I catch them? Can I right click on the Visa Plus and he will automatically cast it? We will see about that. Come on now. Gandalf, do it. Do it, Gandalf, Gandalf. Okay. You know what? Our Easter Light is almost back up. Please, 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 please. Okay, now we can Easter Light. And, and, and. Can we kill both of them at the same time? Easter Light has splash damage. Yes! <laughs> That's painful, dude. He was kind of trying so hard. From the bottom left side, he went up to the top. From the top to the top right. And then he was actually investing so much time and trying so hard to make those Gunner Knights survive. But Gandalf is saying, you shall not pass. And look at the minimap. I mean, at the end of the game, you will see the amount of money we will be able to collect or we, we will have in compared to our ally and to our opponents. Now with the second castle, hallelujah. Dude, we will be, you know, we will make bank. Guys, trust me on that one. Let's use the lightning sword. Eventually, he will try to kill our trebuchet because we are sieging him. And buddy block a little bit with the Gunner Knights. He's trying to kill the siege wargs. Don't let that happen. We need the siege wargs to be level, to be level 2. Oh no, he was actually getting back. Dude, 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 dude. Oh my goodness, man. Lightning Sword. Do something. Gandalf. Gandalf. Okay. Lightning Sword. But he will be killing the Trebuchet, right? Yeah, the Trebuchet are so weak against the melee attackers like that. You know, he killed two of them. It's bad, but he killed Gunner Knights. You know what? It's fine. I will take it. Why? Because, you know, when you have such a lead, right? And you are able to treat a unit against an opening unit. In this case, we are trading Trebuchet against his Gunner Knights. But because we have so much money, we can afford to revive them or to recruit more and more and more and he cannot do that he's limited in terms of the possibilities because he's broke he's like one two maybe even less than that farms outside and that's the Isengard player by the way that means he has no access to the industry he, you cannot use the industry on the farms of Gondor or the blacksmiths of Gondor that's not possible if the eagle summon for the worst case but this guy is triggering me he keeps killing those <laughs> trebuchet all the time I'm pretty tempted to actually get some... Hey, be careful. I'm pretty tempted to actually get some tower guards, you know, to keep those trebuchet protected. Like, in the porcupine formation, this way, the enemy lancers, the, the riders, they will, you know, kind of get blown away. But we have also the eagle summon we can use. Let's build another siege works. I'm going to use the eagle summon actually to save this area at the bottom right side. If he comes to the side. Okay, Legolas is also here. Uh, but it's annoying, you know. Let's use the eagles there. I want to I wanna kill those Gunner Knights. Like at this point, as we are talking, he has zero farms outside. Zero. Zero settlements. Let's give them Firestone. I mean, he has no Manorian Stoneworker, by the way, on this, uh, on this Gunner Castle. If you are wondering why this is so tanky, that's the reason why it's so tanky. It, it almost takes no damage at this point. Okay. Go for this, go for this. One more shot. Boom, son. Let's get the farms, you know. There is no reason to not do. 
Guys, do you see our money? Guys, please, at the bottom left side of your screen, check how much money we have collected. We have so much money, we can lose everything but the cash, including the castles, and we are able to rebuy them. Like, this many farms, with this many outposts, castles, and so on. And then the marketplace upgrades, like Grand Harvest and Iron Ore is kind of busted. But again, I believe it's not busted, because the amount of money you need to spend to build a marketplace to actually get all the updates purchased and then it depends only about how much map control you actually have to make a great use of that you need to invest like four thousand five thousand nearly you know to be able to get all the upgrades from the marketplace and building itself so it's a long game investment long time investment and if the game ends like a little bit sooner it's a waste of money and on small maps, it's also not very good. So it's like the in situational building. You can go inside now for death and glory, ladies. I mean, write it down. Let's use lightning sword on the citadel. Our heroes from our ally are also writing it down. Aragorn with the Yiri sword. Boromir, Faramir, Gana, everybody. Just get inside there. And he will be losing literally everything. We have, we have five power points collected anyway. So we got only five power points away from getting there. And the army of the dead unlocked, which is not even needed. My horse is crazy, guys. We have not lost a single Gondonite throughout the entire game. And every one of them is actually quite high leveled. Boom, son, the ending. And victory is just like that. And guys, please take a look now into the resources we have collected. Please, hold on a second. And by the way, guys, if you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content like this. In the future, I really would appreciate that a lot. And we have nearly 90,000, while everyone else has less than 40. So, no more to add. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out.